when I went out back on the circuit, I hadn't preached since, you know, I was 13 or 14 years old. But I sort of had to prove myself all over again. That's why my, my meetings have only really gotten good about the past year. And I know even though I, I dress what I was considered conservatively, you know, comb my hair back, put on a suit and tie, when I would go to a pastor's church where I hadn't preached before, and they'd sort of look me over and wonder, you know, what was I really going to say? What was I really like? And I'd sort of have to just cool it till I got up on the platform and they saw that I did say all the, the things they wanted to hear. This is Oral Roberts, who was a faith healer evangelist. He had started his ministry in the 40s. Oral Roberts was the pioneer who started the Word of Faith Prosperity Charismatic Movement. Many well-known televangelists have either attended his university or have received his teachings by other means. Here are just a few of those famous preachers. You know everybody asks, you say, who's the biggest failure? They say, Judas. Somebody else will say, no, I believe it's Adam. Well, how about the devil? The biggest one in the whole Bible is God. I deserve good things. I am entitled to my share of happiness. I refuse to beat myself up. I am an attractive person. I am fun to be with. I am blessed. I am strong. I am talented. I am disciplined. I am focused. I am prosperous. I am attractive. And doggone it, people like me. When you sow seed, you trigger the healing. You trigger the miracle. You trigger that prosperity. God will always bless you when you act in faith. So do it now. You know, why do people have such a fit about God calling his creation, his creation, his man, not his whole creation, but his man, little gods? If he's God, what's he going to call them but the God kind? We're believing God for a brand new Falcon 7X so we can go anywhere in the world one stop. I really believe that if Jesus was physically on the earth today, he wouldn't be riding a donkey. If you need money, it's going to take the involvement of money so it can be multiplied. It's not going to happen. It's not, I, listen, I hate to disappoint you, but listen, folks, everything else is a fantasy. It's not falling out of heaven. God's not raining money out of heaven. It's not going to happen. send out your magazine the magazine you show pictures of what you're trying to do and then you raise dollars for uh projects mainly what you the project you do like they raise money for missionary projects say to go to haiti but they'll take in tens of thousands of dollars and maybe only spend a few thousand so you work that as a business then you follow up uh, from your magazine and your radio you use to build and you go into one or two night crusades and auditoriums and the crusades, uh, you don't plan in the auditoriums, you don't make a lot of money from this, but it makes the personal contact. But the main money comes from uh, the magazines and from uh, the radio uh, program, you know. And, but that's like a thing you've got to stay in it all the time. It's like the ones who are successful, they're just, they're businessmen who are constant. They're like, you know, they're like Madison Avenue uh, PR men. What you're about to see was not rehearsed or prearranged in any manner whatsoever and was recorded on motion picture film and soundtrack as it actually happened before these thousands of people assembled here in the big tent. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my happy privilege and pleasure to present the man that God has raised up with a message for your deliverance, God's man for this hour, the Reverend Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts had conducted more than 300 crusades, both domestically and internationally. If you recall, Marjo mentioned in his testimony that a preacher having these crusades helps build up the notoriety and the business to make more money down the line. I would also like to point out that Oral Roberts would often give an introduction before the service to the people, ensuring them that what he was doing was real. My name is Oral Roberts. I'm a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm sitting on the platform of our huge tent cathedral seating 10,000 people, which we stretch in various cities over America in evangelistic and healing campaigns. 
and because I'm sure that you would like to be sure that the event you're about to see actually happened, I have asked Judge Abner Zook of the Akron Municipal Court to prepare an affidavit for me to affirm and sign. In my opinion, I believe that Oral Roberts used actors in many of his healings. Deception back then is just as prevalent as it is today. Jesus never needed an affidavit to prove himself, and the fact that Oral Roberts did this makes me even more suspicious of his true intentions. People can write affidavits all day long, but still doesn't prove that they're lying any less. If people do not receive you, leave their town and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. You're on the radio and you're going over 40 states and you're on at prime time, you've got thousands of people listening, the chances are that there are at least two or three hundred little old ladies who've got a ten dollar bill in a cookie jar. And so if you even get, you know, if a couple hundred go over and get it and send it to you, that's two grand that you've made just like that. And so, you know, if you're going to get into big time religion, this is the games you've got to play, things like that. It's a, it's a, you go into it as a business and you work it as a business, you know. Oral Roberts had produced 52 weekly televised and radio programs. He had also written and published about 120 books and magazines. There were also other miscellaneous merchandise that he would sell. Even though he had a lot of people believing in him, he still was met with criticism, such as claims of him taking advantage of the desperate and the sick people and that he was a fraud and deceiving many. How many have an, an envelope or something that you're putting your faith money in? I say, God, from this moment, I'm expecting my miracle harvest. This is the gospel. It's the word of God. It's going to work. It's going to take that $40 million off of ORU, too. You, it's going to take stuff off of your life. It's going to do it. Sister, tonight is going to be your night. God. God is going to do something for you. Then I'll turn around to the crowd and I'll say to everyone, Do you believe it? And you know, everyone say yes, you know. I said, that's not enough. If there's no faith here tonight, I can't do anything. You've got to believe it. And I go, do you believe it? And then by this time, the crowds go, yes. And I'll say, sister, as I lay my hands on you, it's going to happen. By this time, you're just like this. Because <laughs> I do a whole thing on you. Then, you know, I sort of like get down to, now I'm going to pray the prayer. And everyone bow your heads. And all of a sudden, you go, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> With all these fake faith healers, I would often wonder on how they were able to get these people to fall over and respond in the way that they do. Especially since the fake faith healers aren't even filled with the Holy Spirit or is led by God. One of the things that I was thinking is that the fake faith healers play the music and start shouting and doing other things to charge up the energy in the room to where it overwhelms that person. Another thought I had was maybe that person is just playing into how they think they should react in that moment. And of course there is the unclean spirits that just love to play their part in this. Once you get one or two, once that you get one or two that really come off and say, yeah, I really felt that you know, I had a bad back, I had a bad leg, then there's a whole show that say, oh yeah, I feel better too, because like 90% of it's psychosomatic. I feel better. Yeah. <laughs> is being healed right now. Faith healing is based on the religious belief that chosen individuals can channel the Holy Spirit to cure anything from the common cold to cancer. You're going to see people's arms grow out who have no arms. 
Not only will the lame be healed, but the maimed will be healed. But in this world, if you want to be cured, you're often encouraged to dig deep and donate. Now you can make checks payable, of course, to Penny Hill Ministries. If you're using your credit cards, make sure to put your name, your account number, your expiration date, and sign what it says signature. Whether to many believers, it's an acceptable route to health and happiness. Some faith healers may truly believe in what they're doing, but to me, it's a highly dangerous scam. I don't believe that uh, faith healers are somehow channeling the Holy Spirit. I think that they are using the same tricks that hypnotists and magicians and phony psychics use to manipulate an audience. And despite what they claim, no healer has ever been able to produce a single piece of evidence for a single miraculous healing ever having actually occurred. But despite this, they still fill huge venues, uh, not just in America, but in the UK and all over the world. And they, the top ones are multi-millionaires. And what upsets me most is when they blame their victims for not having enough faith when they find that nothing's changed. Jesus never set out to make a spectacle of healing. There were times that he actually sent people away while he was healing. He also asked several people that he had healed not to make it known. Jesus never needed an audience. Jesus' true message was salvation through him. And at the end of the day, all these fake faith healers never really had any faith to begin with. And there's this older lady worshiping right in front of the platform. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The gift of faith came on me. He said, kick her in the face with your biker boot. I inched closer and I went like this. Bam! And just as my boot made contact with her nose, she fell under the power of God. It's a good couple of inches shorter. Can you see, Nathan, this leg here? Has shrunk a couple of inches. Can you see the difference between if you look at the heels? So what we're going to do is we're going to heal the arthritis in your spine. Father, cast out that devil of arthritis. Grow this leg. It's grow. I can feel. I can feel that in my hand. I can feel this starting to grow. It's like the foot is. Look, you can see. You can see it's coming down to the length of the other foot. Now you can feel that. Can you see this? Can you see that? That is. It's filling out. The calf is extending. The feet are now even. Those legs are now the same length. And you can feel that subside, yes? Uh, and whenever you see them do this on YouTube, there's always a point, they bring the legs up, then they ask for the camera to come in, and all that's happening at that point is they just loosen one shoe. Not the shoe we're all looking at, but the other shoe. All the trick is going to be is, while we're talking about this, this leg lengthening, I'm just moving this shoe, just sliding it back on, the, back on the heel. It's a very old, classic faith healer trick. But there's all sorts of other things I can make it sound like. Like, I know this is going to hurt your hamstrings doing mm. this for a while, so I can say to you, you can feel this pain, can't you? So why don't we do this? And I say, and that pain's gone, isn't it? I lower your legs. You honestly will say yeah, yes. Yeah. But you're talking about this hamstring pain because of this. It's nothing to do with your spinal Abs pain. Absolutely. Likewise, when you stand up, you're not limping. There's no limping. Well, you weren't limping before. Mm. No one said you. You didn't say you were limping. No. Spine is, how's your spine feeling? It's fine. It's fine, yeah. Because it wasn't hurting anyway. Yeah. It is the leg lengthening trick. It is absolutely the mark of a charlatan. And they love to work people over. You've got to, like, shoot in on this. When you see people gathering around people and start laying hands on and praying with someone, you've got to, like, come in with the camera, too. It's very important. Let me see your feet. It's the same thing. I want you to look and see. Come down here. You want to see this from this angle. Come down here and tell me which leg is short. Come here. Right Let's there. throw in your back out. Wait, the no left one, right? Yes. It's at least an inch short, right? Yeah, because I broke it. You broke it and they yeah. put it back together and they didn't yeah. put all the pieces back. Yeah, I broke it. You ready to get a piece? Yeah, yeah watch. Daddy, well, thank you. In Jesus' name. Left leg, I command you grow. You right now, us? in Jesus' name. Yeah, I feel it. I feel it, bro. From you, I think that's a compliment. Find out where that dove went. Boy, that climax on that dove was it. I like that. <laughs>